Uh, PC WrestlePod nerds out there, and welcome to another live stream edition of the BC WrestlePod, the official podcast for us here at the BC WrestlePod YouTube channel and conglomerate empire. We're trying to take over the galaxy of wrestling, you guys. <laughs> so oh. join us. Yes, so join us in our conquest. I am El Jefe himself, Mikey, and joining me for this particular episode of the PC WrestlePod, it's just a dynamic duo for this one. The Phantom Stranger himself, you can find him all over the Ring of Honor reviews and popping up in and out of wherever we can get him. Jesse, thank you for being here, my friend. I'm so excited to have you on this one. I'm excited too. Let's, let's talk about some ring gear. Yes, so... This episode is going to be relatively short since it's just a two-man job this time, but we are still going to be giving it our all, and we get to talk about a really fun topic, as Jesse mentioned. One of the aspects of wrestling that we love more than anything outside of the storytelling and the, you know, physicality and the athleticism is the ring gear, because the ring gear to us here at BC WrestlePod is also very important because it just enhances the talent and it enhances everything it is super fantastic so what we're going to do is me and jesse were given the homework assignment to come up with at least three to four different wrestlers who we love their ring gear and just kind of talk about it so what's going to happen here is we're going to go through our fashion board as if we were in fashion school and we're going to break down our favorite you know, wrestlers ring gear. I can give a couple explanations as to why. And then, uh, you know, we'll just go from there and see what happens. So this is going to be fun. All right. So first up on the fashion stage, since it's just me and Jesse, the coin has determined that Jesse is going to go first. So Jesse, let's talk about your fashion board here. All right. So I, I picked which what are some, some pretty iconic looks for some wrestlers that had some longevity. Uh, the first one I picked was The Undertaker. And The Undertaker said a lot of different ring gear through his career started out with you know and i'm just talking undertaker not mean mark callis not part of the skyscrapers just specifically that character he started out with the, the western mortician with the big tie and the very like thin fabric shirt uh and then it just kind of grew and more from there we went from gray we went to purple that purple and black is just so iconic that i still to this day absolutely love that color combination because of that fully admitted but for me it was his like high era ministry of darkness when he's got this super gothic cloak he's got the shoulder pauldrons on it too that the cloak flows out of he's got that big chest piece that just is it just looks so menacing and then he's got the split the forked beard kind of going with like this those above uh yeah satan one of the high demon type looks it just to me it, it personified that time in wrestling of the attitude era and showed how into his character that he was and it was so convincing especially you know as an eight nine year old kid who was watching at the time it was so convincing but it wasn't something that i wanted to ever look away from i just i, I loved it it was captivating mikey what do you think about at least the undertakers because i know we've got a little bit different on uh, on ours <laughs> so i mean not to spoil too much of head but a lot of my folks that i picked for favorite ring gears tend to be leaning towards more the current era but i will say of all of Undertaker's looks outside of what we normally known as. As soon as you sent me this picture to put it onto the slideshow, I totally had forgotten that this was a thing. And I was just like, oh, it's for some reason it shouldn't work. Because normally shoulder pads are always a hit and miss in any genre of pop culture media. But in wrestling, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. I think it, you're right, Jesse. It kind of enhances the character that you know, was this iteration of The Undertaker that was going on here for this one with, I love the cutouts of the shirt too. <laughs> like, yeah. It's it's just so different. And I honestly, I love it. But it also kind of gives me like Donnie Darko kind of vibes as well, which is a very interesting comparison. I'm a kid of a certain genre and a kid of a certain decade. So Donnie Darko, Beetlejuice, that very new wave Gothic aesthetic is my jam. And I, I actually, this, this is fantastic. So, Fantastic one, actually, choice. I have his. Uh, I have this action figure of this exact gear downstairs. I just, it's, it's absolutely one of my favorites. I feel like if the cape wasn't on there, the shoulder pads would look absolutely silly. And there's been a lot of silliness in wrestling. We know that, but it, it really works here. And this is, you know, I went through all of his career to the where he had the 
Phantom of the Opera mask because of the broken orbital bone because of King Mabel. So where he had the big, it almost looked like felted uh, suede jacket that got stuck on his freshly shaved head that he had to fight out of. That was absolutely hilarious. Down to his, his you know, big evil red devil t-shirts and jeans and, and the really kind of the everyman look. This is absolutely my favorite Undertaker gear that he, he's had. Moving I on mean, from there. So good. Uh, let's, do something you want to add, Mikey? No, I was just saying, I, I like that you picked this version of the Undertaker because I feel like this version doesn't get talked about a lot. No, and it absolutely should because it's, it pushes that envelope of ridiculousness, but how did this manage to work? And it did at the time. He was terrifying at the time, and I, I loved it, and I always wanted more of it. Now, moving on, I know we talked a little bit about more towards the, the recent, so I guess I do have a recency bias, but I think Liv Morgan goes a little underrated with her gear, at least as of 2019 on, because she does so many pop culture references in there that are sometimes they're great, sometimes they're subtle, sometimes they're overt. She just kind of mixes it up. But it always looks good, and it always looks like, hey, I, I remember that from somewhere. So she kind of hits those nostalgia points. This is the Christina Aguilera-inspired gear. We've had Britney-inspired gear, Chucky-inspired. So it's very stuff from, like, the 90s or early 2000s that I'm looking at and going, hey, why do I know that? And then it's kind of a fun trivia game for me. It's like, oh, this looks like that. Uh, honorable mention in here, now that we're talking about that, who I didn't get on there is a lot of Zelina Vegas cosplay stuff is amazing. So she needs to get, she needs to find some way on here as well. I... I totally agree about Zelina. Her, I'm always excited to see what she ends up coming up with for her Royal Rumble entrances because that's where she always goes out with the cosplay. And every single year it's different, you know, whether it be characters from anime or my favorite one still is when she dressed up as Judy from Street Fighter that one year mm -hmm. and did the whole thing. It's so fantastic but going back to Liv yeah I agree with you here Liv especially from 2019 onwards when she became this iteration of Liv and always pulling pop culture references into her gear and then playing a again like you said it's a fun little game to play be like all right what is she doing like the details of it it is fantastic and I think it also kind of adds to well, her character and her gimmick, she, you never know what to expect from her, and the ring gear is fantastic for sure. I mean, it goes with her saying, watch me, because it's not like, yeah, I want to, because I want to know what your gear going to be and how, if I can figure out what it's inspired by this time. It is such a great thing. So I also see that we have some two other people that, you know, I thought, well, one of them did make my list, but another one I was thinking about it, I was like, you know what? No, Jesse got this one, so I got this. <laughs> but I was, I thought about it, I was like, you know, they, there have been some iconic moments, but Jesse, go for it. So I'm going to jump, before I jump into that one, I'm going to jump into the honorable mention because you had said three and I had to put the fourth on there. Bianca Bella, not only is her gear always just fantastic, it matches with her makeup, matches with her hair and everything that goes into it. It'll be, sometimes it'll be, you know, a link to where they're performing or the event itself. But the fact that she makes it all to me is, is so fascinating and impressive. My daughter is super into fashion design and creating outfits. And so when she found out that Bianca Belair makes her own gear, immediate favorite right there. And mind you, she's only seven, but still, that's just such a cool thing to, to be able to, to see that out there too. Yeah, I'm going to dive a little more into Bianca because spoiler alert, she did make my fashion board. So I'll wait until my turn to kind of go into those same reasons, but there's something else for me from a personal standpoint. But now let's get into the grand pooba of all these things because rest in power, you have also picked Bray Wyatt, specifically the Fiend iteration of the gear. Specifically the Fiend. Now, I have always loved Bray Wyatt's gear from the, the Waylon Mercy, Max Cady, white pants with the Hawaiian shirts and fedora. I always thought that was good to, you know, up last year, the pitch black match, which I know is very polarizing. I actually enjoyed it for what it was. I really wanted to see more of whatever character was developing from there, that last mask that he had out and all the different symbols that he had in the, the ultraviolet paint on his head, on his arms. It was just so cool. But for me, The Fiend is the most iconic and best of all of his gears because it was so impactful is not the right word, but they had such a chance for it to go silly and go goofy and for it not to work. They had one chance from the buildup from when we had the first vignette of you heard the coughing and you get Mercy the Buzzard coming out of the box up until we saw a few snippets of The Fiend himself, but not actually ring it 
wrestling. It was a you know pre recorded vignette to his debut against Finn Balor. They had to nail it 100%, or it was not going to work. It was going to come off as goofy and silly and uh, another bad booking for Bray Wyatt. Now, we're not going to go into that because that could be a two hour show, bad booking for Bray Wyatt. But he comes out and he's got this not only the, the mask but the dreads that are yellow with the yellow out eyes and then we go back to superstar ghost stories that he told and i want to say it was 2014 15 so we got long-term storytelling that this character has been there the whole time and we hadn't seen it to his he's got he's still got the the sleeve the shirt that has the same logo he's had on for a while the hands in prayer that leather jacket those red and black pants which on in the wrong presentation can just come off as again really silly but it worked here because it matched him with the, the little bit of red that's on his gloves the hurt and heel that he played into with just I, I could go on and on about this but this was absolutely my my favorite ring gear of, of anyone because it hit all that it needed to and it was so scary going into it of how is this going to go yeah in all iterations of ray wyatt i thought a lot of the wrestlers during that time period were just different because we're used to seeing like the wrestling singlets the shorts you know the wrestling pants during this time but between being bray wyatt and also follow the buzzer bray wyatt too with the shirts and the hat and everything it was very unique and i think outside of just storytelling that he does did with his character work the ring gear is also what kind of caught my eye and made me become a fan of brace because i was like all right the tommy bahama shirts let's go it was just different and you know i feel like again this is why we picked this episode you always talk about athleticism we talk about storytelling but ring gear is also important because visually speaking it helps you get invested more in a person and the wrestler too with the, the, the presentation is important because kind of the same way we eat. we we look first before we dive into anything so if the food looks bad it's good we we're not going to go in expecting it to taste good so kind of the same here bad analogy but i'm going with it anyway where if the wrestlers don't look like the character that that they've created or put up in our heads it just kind of falls flat like mordecai it's just just to go throw an old reference could have had such a good look they gave him like a weird very sheer almost tank top thing and it, it apparently wasn't breathable because how sweaty he was immediately just took me out. I was like, okay, this is just another sweaty wrestler. But but yeah. back to the point with Bray, it was it, he paid so much attention to the small details down to he had red and black spats that he was wrestling in, which looked cool as hell. That lantern when he first came out, the lantern that helped him, which was his own face stretched out. And it goes to what he was doing in the Firefly Funhouse, promising he's never going to be that slob loser again, and then cutting the cardboard cutout with the chainsaw. It just, it, it worked so well. Uh, and it was so many different levels in his uh, accessories as well, especially that that lantern, which I, I, I would love to have that at some point. But going more into the, the detail of his character never had good booking, but always could talk. And it was like the Fiend saying, no, it's time. Talking time is over to the point where he stretched out the mouth where he can't do it. Anymore. It, I know. Again, talking about the booking of, of the Fiend and Bray Wyatt in general when he became this version is a whole nother podcast. <laughs> Let's not dive into Simon Miller's dad's comments lately. Ooh, okay. It's like, ooh, yeah. I mean, like I said, rest in power to Bray Wyatt. I, side tangent, I'm really hoping that this documentary that's about to air in two weeks is a good one for his legacy. I think it's so. a one week. I think it's a week from today. Oh my gosh, you're right. I am scared, but excited. I am too. And hopefully, you know, depending on some talks behind the scenes, hopefully, you know, if everyone is on board with it, I would love to be a part of this and have, spoiler alert, Jesse and whoever wants to be a part of this, I will be there with Jesse. We watch this thing and then we review it and talk about just legacy of Bray Wyatt. I look forward to it. Oh, me too. Absolutely. We'll be a mess together. Okay. But, but Jesse, these are some very solid picks. I loved all the picks that you, you picked for this episode because it ranges from men's, women's, and then different time periods too. It's all fantastic, my friend. So thank you. All right. So now let's move on to mine my fashion board up here so mine's gonna be a little more eclectic if you see are taking a look at the pictures here my mentality of going into this is that i am a big like out there type of fashion person i'm very avant-garde 
very colorful, very weird, very cool stuff. So these are the four that I picked. So the three that I picked, first I'm gonna start off with my girl, Bianca Belair. So specifically, I picked this photo of her. So if you wanna pause and zoom in a little bit later, this photo has written all over it on her gears. It's like black history in the making is all printed all over. Oh, I gear. love that. And so the reason I picked Bianca Belair is one, as Jesse stated when he talked about her, that she makes her own gear, which is super fantastic. One of the things that made me love Bianca Belair more is the fact that she's very unapologetic when it comes to representing her, you know, culture, heritage, you know, being a African-American woman wrestler in WWE. She is never afraid to represent her blackness at any chance she gets. Like, this was one of them. And then when she was in NXT, she dressed as like an African queen, which was great. She just knows how to combine a fashion and just to be able to represent her, you know, her heritage and her culture, which, and she's very unapologetic for it, which I really, really love. So Bianca, I love you. She's one of my favorite wrestlers. This the whole package is great. Now we're gonna get into the more weirder stuff because even though Bianca's stuff is loud, it's like, okay, I can see it. You know, she, she makes her own stuff. I can see it. she's very athletic. Now we get into the weird side of things, which I totally love. So I'm gonna start with this middle picture here. This is a picture of Will Osprey, and this is his ring gear from Wrestle Kingdom this year. I love because Wrestle Kingdom happens to be in Japan. They always end up getting the okay from these Japanese video game companies and other co Ubisoft. video game companies, Ubisoft in this case. Like last year when Will and Kenny Omega fought, Kenny Omega literally came out to Sephiroth theme from Final Fantasy VII and dressed like Sephiroth, which I almost picked Kenny, but I picked Will in here because Will is one of my favorite male wrestlers of all time right now. But this whole, his just not just this outfit alone, but Will always has some of my favorite ring gear with the big oversized like coat with the fur and just the shininess to it all. But this particular one I like because it is an ex replica of the main character from Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, I believe is the game where it takes place in London, but or Syndicate, one of the two. And his I entrance- It's either Syndicate or Rogue, I thought. Yeah, one of the two. But his whole entrance was also Assassin's Creed because he came out from the elevator, he jumped from it, it was fantastic. I love this collaboration. Then if we go to the left, this is probably the more outlandish of the New Japan wrestlers. So for those of you who don't know, this is Hiromu Takahashi. And there were many, and I mean many <laughs> pictures that I could, that I wanted to use. Honestly, Hiromu Takahashi is probably my favorite in terms of ring gear because it's very bright, it's very colorful. And you wanna talk about like being so coded to the community, Hiromu, look no further than Hiromu Takahashi. But one thing I love, my favorite ring gear of Takahashi is this iteration where it's the colorful eye monster thing based on Japanese mythology. It's fantastic. And every single year he goes to Wrestle Kingdom, he just adds onto it. So it started with a couple of eyeballs and then it evolved to like 10. And then this year he had like 20 different eyeballs and then he even had a mask with just an eyeball on it too, which was super fantastic. I can't stop looking at it. When at first the picture camera was like, oh, those are nice flowers. And then as I'm looking, I was like, wait a second, there's more to this. He is just like the weirdest character in New Japan in terms of how he presents himself. But that's why I like him and his ring gear is very colorful, very loud very unabashed will be like oh yeah i'm gonna be flamboyant and i'm okay with that and this is one of my favorites this eyeball coat has become my favorite and i may or may not have sent haruma takahashi like tweets be like i need to know where you get this coat i will buy this thing i don't care like it's fantastic and then of course my honorable mention has to go to seth freaking rollins this picture I picked, it was from WrestleMania last year with his entrance into WrestleMania. I was there live. He had like a 40 foot like train following behind him in this giant coat. And underneath he was wearing like pink mesh as well. Like it was very see-through. You know, when we had Seth Rollins in the shield and then he when he was a part of the authority, his fashion game was kind of boring for me because it's very paint by numbers. Like, oh, he wears the wrestling pants. And then I don't know if it's because he was got, you know, dated and married Becky Lynch or just because he decided why not it's 2000 and we're in like the 2020s now let's be bold about it he wears the most outlandish thing you want to talk about like harris fashion week seth rollins is that wrestling character 
comes out in these weird Atlantis things. I remember that he made those oversized boots popular, looking like uh, looking like Mario yeah. in pieces. I was just like, now I kind of want one of those, and they come in different yeah. colors. What? He just wears the most outlandish things, and I'm kind of here for this is a term that is kind of outdated, but it's very metrosexual. He owns it's... it too. He is so confident, and he knows how ridiculous a lot of them look, you know, for a social convention. But he doesn't care. He owns it, and it works. Again, like the last couple of years, he's been making more bold choices, like brighter colors, like over the top pieces. And then he even goes to town to like, literally, it's like the Met Gala of wrestling with Seth Rollins. You like mesh, like fishnets, like it doesn't matter. We, I love Seth Rollins as a wrestler, but I have become a bigger fan of his just because of how ridiculous his outfits are. But he's so unabashed and unfazed of what people say about him on the internet when it comes to these things. But this is fantastic. Another honorable mention too, just for over the top, kind of similar in the same vein as Roman Takahashi. I thought about putting Asuka on here too, because Asuka has some of my favorite ring gear. Her oh, and Kyrie yeah, both. I'm just a sucker for big over the top extravagant like coats and capes and things like that. But yeah, so these are my favorite wrestlers with their ring gears. To go along with your honorable mention, it's not even just their, their outfits, because their outfits are, are stellar but the makeup as well that just enhances it because that makeup can either detract or just be non-existent but the makeup artists that they work with have such a way to have it enhance their gear and it just it, it's beautiful it looks so so complete it really really is and again just like bianca belair makes her own gear i am thoroughly impressed with you know wrestlers who also do their own makeup like face paint and things like that so i'm thinking like finn Balor when he would go be the demon finn balor and all that body paint he would do and of course asuka now that she's in her kana era with this iteration of her with makeup every time there's pay-per-view and Kyrie. also shout out to rhea ripley with her makeup it is like very gothic aesthetic i love it it's fantastic but presentation as you said jesse presentation matters especially in wrestling because Outside of the athleticism and the storytelling, the presentation of your character is also another way that people will get hooked and invested into the wrestlers themselves. Because we have seen there be not so great fashion that has made me care less about wrestling as time has gone on. Uh, I'm trying to think, who's a modern wrestler's ring gear that I don't necessarily like? I mean, Giant Gonzalez is just an automatic, yeah, yeah. like, no. But we know why, because it was a weird time back then. King you know? Kong Bundy. Yeah, not King Kong Bundy. And you can't say it was a product of the time, because look at Bam Bam Bigelow's ring gear at that time. Yeah, Amazing. never mind. I, I take that I take that back. Yeah, I can't really. Oh, no. The Godfather, I probably hate it, because I was like, okay, he's a pimp. So I think I hate that gear only because we're, we were perpetuating a stereotype, but that's about it. Because, I mean, ring gear comes and goes. Like, it doesn't, it, it can make or break, but it, it necessarily doesn't. What I've appreciated, though, as we have seen over the years of being wrestling fans, that the ring gear has evolved and has become more individualized, which is what I love. Yeah. Also, Finn Balor, you got the hook up with Nike. Slide me a DM their way because I want to get custom Nike like that. And the Young Bucks, too. I always want the Young Bucks shoes. Like, every time there's a paper, they have custom shoes. And I, I like the Judgment Day ones better than the Young Bucks ones, but that's just me. That's I like very the fair. That, oh, yeah. Purple is such a good color. But, Jesse, we did it. We, we did. We made it down the runway. My final thought fashion is important in wrestling. I had a fun time, Jesse. This is great. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. I'd, uh, I'd like to see get some interaction because I'd love to see what other, some other people because as we're talking and going through different hours, I'm like, wait, there's a couple people I forgot about, like RVD's airbrush singlets. Those were awesome. <laughs> airbrush singlets, let's talk about ravishing Rick Rude, like having your, your opponent's wife's face spray painted on your crotch. Like, come on, that's pretty iconic. Uh, another one is just the simplicity of Razor Ramon's gear too. Is when he just come back, I was like, oh, suave. And same thing with Eddie Guerrero, too. I was like, he wore the wrestling pants, but he made it work. Yeah, he did. I like so, a lot of his was his color combination worked really well. Which that I red think and is, gold, come on. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you, wrestlers of this modern era, whether you have been in the game forever or just starting, take some color, take some basic art theory because color combinations definitely help. Trust me. Uh, well, this was a fun one, but me and Jesse got to get up on out of here. So thank you for tuning into this episode. We don't know what we're going to be covering for next month's episode, but I will let you know that the date that we might be doing something fun, 
day before my birthday, but we'll see. I may or may not have an idea because we are entering WrestleMania season where we talk about mm -hmm. our favorite and our not so favorite WrestleMania match. <laughs> like everyone picks their favorite, everyone picks their not so favorite over the history and we could do that, but we never know what we're gonna do because these are reserved to have for a lot of fun. I mean, yeah. it would take a lot of time, but I like the idea of doing a favorite, a not favorite match you think is overrated. Overrated, just go through it, be like, all right, you got five minutes, let's go. So what's your, make, make your case, bam, bam, bam. All right, gang, critique. I think that's a good idea, but we'll figure it out. Until then, it was a pleasure hanging out with you, Mikey. It definitely was. From all of us here at BC Wrestle Pod, remember, take care of yourself, love one another, stay biconic, and more importantly than anything, you deserve to finish your story. We will see you for the next one, but until then, that's up for now. Thank you so much for tuning in to another Vibe Tribe production. What's going to happen next time? Well, you're going to have to tune in to find out. But until then, remember, take care of yourself, love one another, and as always, make sure that you keep the good times rolling. Thank you for being here, and we'll see you next time.